be still and know that I am God. The whole of you, sweet friend, is God. The whole, the whole of your life, the whole of your world is God. Know that every minute you devote to being silent like this as a nothingness of personal self. Letting God get on with being God. You are feeding and nourishing the whole of your experience. And the more experience is fed and nourished with truth, the more it reveals the fullness of its truth. And you are like a miracle in experience after you devote much of your time each day to feeding the world. When you know the truth of reality, you have the great secret of experience. And the presence of you witnesses miracles of experience. but you have to make sure that as you step out into experience, you've given it breakfast. You've fed it thoroughly. Otherwise, it doesn't have the strength of truth to stand there perfectly real and palpable for you. But when you've fed your world and you know that you've fed it, you know it's truth, you know that it is fed and fulfilled with the incorporeal truth of it, 
And you can feel that incorporeality everywhere as you're walking around in your experience and acting in your experience, working in your experience, expressing, giving in your experience. Then nothing in the universe can stop experience from being truthful. And you will watch harmonious copies rushing to wherever you are so that the copy is the perfect whole and fulfilled image and likeness. You will watch good coming out of thin air. You will watch all that you need in your experience come out of the earth, come from left and right, up and down. As, and we have to keep underlining this, as you and I are the being of incorporeality. We're being the truth of the experience we wish to witness. Let's sit and feed experience a little more. Which means, as you know, let's sit as a nothingness and witness experience being fed by God a little more together.
as you are ever more filled with the light of truth, you don't think in terms of corporeal form changing. When you use dollars, your awareness is not on that which seems corporeal, but that which is incorporeal. And you realize that the fascinating experience of dollars moving around from here to there is completely an experience of awareness alone, but that actually the whole infinity of form is always right there. You can never be devoid of dollars when you know that dollars are the incorporeal. The incorporeal form. Dollar, a dollar is formless. And as it's formlessness, it is the very infinity of that very form. And when you know that, your awareness is on the incorporeal. All we're doing as we either receive dollars and as we give dollars or spend dollars is experiencing awareness moving around. But dollars themselves never move. The formation of any form never moves. It's always here where you are. You are it, in fact. And as your awareness is really being the incorporeal, then all you have is incorporeality, and that means all you ever have is infinity. Now you watch as you bring incorporeal awareness to that which seems to be corporeal, not trying to play magic tricks, but realizing that the movement or the ebb and flow of, let's carry on with dollars for a minute, even as we're experiencing the ebb and flow of dollars, what's actually there is always the whole infinity of dollars, of wealth. As our awareness is there, we're in reality. And you watch how quickly that reality, which is never disturbed, of course, because it's never discordant or never lacking anything, it's not experiencing ebb and flow, it's experiencing the whole all the time. You watch how quickly that awareness brings to your experience all sufficiency at every step. But as we get caught up in believing that dollars are real entities and therefore we witness an ebb and flow, sometimes we have a sufficiency and other times we have what seems to be a lack or a shortage and then a need in the near future. As we get caught up in that corporeal sense of the incorporeal, then we're stuck and the truth the original, the master being, the master form can't get through as the copy because we blocked it in our belief that the copy is something in and of its own self. Now you imagine if we made a copy, let's again stick with dollars, let's imagine that we have the infinite presence of dollars as our master presence, our master form. And we made a copy for a complete and utter sufficiency this hour of our needs and our giving, our sharing. Complete and utter. But that copy came out lacking. We looked at that copy and we realized it doesn't have the sufficiency of our need this hour and our desire to give this hour. It doesn't have it. Where is it? What's wrong? Where would we look? Where would we make our effort? What would we try to correct? If we believed that the copy was real, then we would look to it and look to all its avenues and channels of greater copies. How can I get more copies? Because I need them. We would make our effort there, out in the world of copies. Now, are we going to succeed or fail? 
Of course, if we look to find the completeness, the wholeness, the truth of the original in what is presenting itself to us as a lacking or limited or discordant copy, then we are seeking amiss. We are judging unrighteously. Even in the world of photocopying, if we try to do such a thing, we'd quickly realize, of course, that we're looking amiss, we're seeking amiss. A child may do such a thing. A child may not be fully aware of the master sitting there in the photocopier and be very disappointed in his or her copies. Be very upset. Be very disillusioned. We promised the full and whole copy, but... What's been produced is a lacking, limited, discordant, ill copy. So the awareness that isn't aware of the truth of the copy, which is the master, can become very disillusioned and make all kinds of effort in the wrong direction. And this is exactly us as we believe in the corporeal to be something in and of its own self and everything to do with it to be something in and of their selves and thereby we are seeking amiss. We're never able, if we seek amiss, to find the truth of our experience. Now, the truth of experience is in and is itself the perfect original. And so the way we do this now, again, let's stick with dollars. But of course, you know, this applies to absolutely every aspect of life. We withdraw from the copy, withdraw from the corporeal, withdraw from the dollar, withdraw from the seeming lack of dollars, withdraw from the seeming avenues of increased dollars and all its effort and withdraw from the belief that somehow all that effort and all those avenues are going to produce the good end of the pairs of opposites, which is a sufficiency of dollars. We all know that when we do that, it's not very long before those holes in our pockets leave us with a lack again, as Haggai so very clearly gave us. Now then, let's get to the original. Where is she? Where is she hiding? The original is only hidden because we've been looking in the wrong place. The original is I. The original is the incorporeal omnipresence and is formless as far as the intellect describes form. The original is the incorporeal oneness of being. Be still and know that I am God, I am the original, I itself, God being itself. So let the corporeal go, all of it, good and bad, the whole world, let it go, the whole universe of dollars, let them go. Let all the avenues go, forget them as a cause, as the original, no they're not. Forget the whole lot and come here to the original, to God. And remember that there is nothing new under the sun. God does not give nor withhold. Why? Because God is already the whole of infinity being you. As all experience, you can't have any experience but infinity. And you can't have any presence or place but omnipresence and omniplace, which is the whole of infinity. And you can't have unformed infinity or unformed place or unformed God because there isn't such a thing. So as you come to I, you have the full formation of I, the full formation of the original, as whatever form is right in front of you. And if it's dollars, then you now have the full formation of the infinity of supply of wealth. And we call the corporeal sense of it dollars. That's fine. As long as we don't believe in those dollars as being something in and of their own selves. God is the one thing in and of its own self. 
the incorporeal is the one thing, the one form, the one wealth in and of its own self alone. And now as we realize this, as we've come to this, as we now let wealth itself reveal itself as the whole of our experience. And remember, we are not involved in the interpretation of experience. We are not involved in the corporeal sense of experience. Is that easier to understand? We're not involved in it at all. If we leave it alone, then it can reveal itself as the copy of the original. And we will find plenty, plenty, plenty of every single form, including dollars, wherever we are. If we know and if we're living the truth of wealth, which is the incorporeal, which has no amount, nothing new under the sun, no giving nor withholding, just the whole of itself always as and being the whole of our experience. And as we sit in the silence and let God get on with revealing itself as our whole experience, let God get on with being the whole experience, let God get on with being the whole mechanic, the whole formulation, the whole formation, the whole mould. Let God be the mould of itself. Let God pour through unhindered because our senses are now clear of the nonsense of the pairs of opposites, the nonsense of believing the copy is something of its own self and all the effort involved in that nonsense. So senses are clear and God now pours through as experience moulding itself as the perfect copy, the image and likeness of no matter what is in front of us this hour. This is the great secret. And once we have this secret and rest many times a day and let many times a day, then we will find the moulds of experience are always full and complete. And if not this minute, then in the next few minutes or the next few hours or by tomorrow morning, because it really is quick and sharp and powerful when we let God get on with being God as itself, to itself, for itself alone, and simply be a beholder of whatever happens. But knowing that whatever happens is always whole and complete because God is whole and complete and now we're leaving the original to get on with it. The copy has to be whole and complete. It has no choice but to be whole and complete because all it is is a copy. You would never expect your copy in your photocopier or in your scanner to be something completely different from the original. You'd never expect that. It'd be impossible. And so if it appears to be so, what do you do? Go and unsmudge the glass, clean the glass between the original and the copy. Make sure everything's good and clean and pure. And this is exactly what we do with our senses. Make sure our senses are good and clean and pure. And then let our senses be filled with the original pouring through. Then the infallible copy of that original. But can you imagine the glass, which is the equivalent of our senses, getting involved in making the copy in its own idea, with its own wisdom, its own understanding? We'd have a mess on our hands. And that's what our world is, a mess. But actually not a mess, only sensed as a mess. Actually forever, here and now, the whole and complete image and formation and mould and activity of God And so as we now know this truth and live it, let God feed our world through and as us, then please, please know that you can 100% trust that your experience will be the mould of the fullness of God, the copy of the image and likeness of the fullness of God. But please leave it to God. Leave it to truth. Trust God. Trust truth. And let. Behold. And you are free.
Well, I am sure our July class is going to clear the senses even more, lift us even more into the experience of truth. But for now, thank you so, so deeply for the experience we have all been and all heard as the message of this class. It's been an extraordinary gathering, an extraordinary class. I love you all so very much. Thank you from here to eternity for who you are and your beautiful devotion to truth and to the truth of your world. Thank you, thank you.